So let's uh, let's go through these translation exercises in Mounts chapter 27. Got the workbook here, page 108. And um, what I what I want to do is walk through several of these questions, especially if there's one's particular problems you have, we want to look at those. But I also just want to walk you through my, my own method for how I think about participles, how to identify what they're doing in the sentence, and uh, also making sure that you you keep your uh, solar system, as it were, your solar system of clauses. Because when you have participles, you have a verb that forms the core of the participial phrase or clause, and that participle will have its own modifiers and its own objects and whatnot. And you need to make, make sure that you don't uh, mix up the planets revolving around the sun of that participle as if they were planets that belong to a different solar system, okay? Uh, because the main clause will have its own modifiers and its own objects if it's transitive, and you, you just make sure that your constituents stay where they belong, all right? So... Let me just ask, are there any particular questions you want to work through here? We'll go through those, and then I'll go through the other ones. Let's look at number three. Why don't we recite this in unison together? Ready? Paloi elusantai epito anamatimu legontes hati ego emi. All right. So uh, what does paloi mean here? Many. And what case is poloi? It is nominative. Absolutely. Do you see that nominative plural masculine form there at the back? So what do you think the role of this word many is then? Yes, if that's nominative plural, we're thinking subject, right? Okay, good. Elucentai? What's that? What's it's a verb. What's the lexical form? Erchamai. That does not look very much like a lucentai, does it? How did you know that that was the lexical form? You didn't? How would you figure it out? Yes, your principal parts list, okay? So uh, what is going to help you identify the tense of this form? Obviously, it can't be the present. There is a sigma right here, and that does make it look future, doesn't it? All right, Let, let's think for a moment about what it means to erkamai. What, is, what does that mean, to, to come or go? Is that a verb that, that's transitive that could take a direct object? Mm -mm, no. So when I see this mm tie ending here, that's looking passive or, or middle passive, right? But this, this can't really be a truly passive meaning if the verb to go or come can't take a direct object, because you can only make verbs passive if they could take a direct object when they're active. I ate a hamburger, the hamburger was eaten, right? But if I say I died, intransitive, I couldn't make that passive. I was died, which means something completely different, right? So uh, here, uh, the, the fact of the matter is the future form is just always middle. Okay, it's, it's a middle-only form. There is no active form. Mounts refers to this as a deponent verb, right? So how am I going to translate this? Poloi elusantai. Many will come. Okay, many will come. And then epito anamatimu. How can we translate this? Yeah, on the basis of my name or probably in my name, meaning as, as my representatives or claiming to be such, right? Uh, and then legontes. What type of a form is this? And what, what can you see that helps you identify that type of form? What's that? What do we have here? New tau. What is new tau? What does that make you think? What should it make you think? Participle, right? And this is for what? Active participles or middle passive participles? That's an active participle. When I see the epsilon sigma, what case ending is that? Nominative and plural, right? Now let me ask you, is this 
Could this be nominative plural and feminine? How do I know that? Feminines are not third declension like this. They are first declension, right? All participles in the feminine are, third, are first declension. So, uh, this is nominative plural and masculine. Or, we might want to say neuter, but are the neuter plurals going to end with S for the case ending in the third declension? No, those end with what? Alpha. Alpha. So, this can only be nominative plural masculine. And here we had a nominative plural masculine form poloi. So do you see the grammatical link here? Okay, we have that link. And that means that whoever's doing the saying is the same as the poloi who will, will come. Okay, so many will come in my name saying, that is the many who come are saying, saying what? Hati ego emi. Now, this is probably where uh, many students struggle. How do we deal with the hadi? How did you translate the hadi? Okay, so normally you translate it as that, right? So, what is that what you did in your homework? Okay, so you didn't translate the that, you just introduced the, the uh, you, used, you understood the hadi to be introducing a direct quotation. Okay. And if that's the case, then how did you translate a go and me? I am. Right. And we're missing something, right? Something like I am he. You, know, you, need, you need more context to be able to, 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 to realize what's going on here. But... Uh, but the idea here is that hadi can't be translated as that. What's another way to translate it? Since or because. But it can also be translated as nothing, but make sure you open your quotation mark. That is to say, it can introduce direct speech or direct discourse. Okay? So many will come in my name saying, quote, I am or I am he. All right? Yeah, yeah, good, good question. So I, I would say this. Um, usually when you determine it's temporal, while, causal, because, um, that is not an inherent part of the semantics of the participle, okay? So you have to just look more broadly at the context to know what, what is the writer doing. Basically, what the writer is starting with in their own mind is the idea of what they want to say. He was doing this while he did this. And so what can he do? What can the speaker do? The speaker can use a participle to indicate that temporal idea. But if the speaker were wanting to say something like, because of such and such, because he was doing this, he did such and such, then he's starting with the causal idea in his mind. Now, what, what Greek strategy could he use for that? A participle as well, right? And so... It's not that the participle itself inherently has those notions. It's that the reader or the writer's thinking about those notions and then has available, you know, uh, within the grammar ways to do it that happen to be the same. Uh, what we're doing, though, is we're not starting with the, the, the writer's mind, are we? We're starting with what the output was. What, what did the person write? And we're trying to reason back to say, okay, so what was probably in his mind when he used that participle? Okay. And so you could say while if you think within the context that the temporal idea of being contemporaneous is, is what's going on. Do you think that that's the idea here? Many will come in my name while they say I am he? Probably not. I would think that this is probably more an issue of, of uh, maybe manner, right? Um, that many will come in my name and their coming will be characterized by this, this thing that they'll be saying things, right? Uh, saying what? Saying that, that they're the Messiah, that they're the Christ. All right. What other ones? Other particular questions? 
Yeah, let's look at number seven here. All right. So what's your question? Mm -hmm. I would translate it to all the synagogues in Galilee instead of the no synagogues in Galilee. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess there the question is really what does the Hallane go with, right? Now, uh, what's the lexical form for this word? Do you remember? It's halos. And then I have hale halon, which is to say this is an adjective that follows what pattern for its declension? You have omicron, eta omicron. What's that? Two, one, two, right? I have a masculine form, a feminine form, and a, ma a neuter form. Okay. Now, uh, looking at the new here, what case could you tell me that that form is? What do you think? What case is that? What case gender and number? Let's just parse the whole thing. Mm, it's singular, but the, if you if it were dative singular, we'd be looking for an iota or an iota subscript, right? See the eta here? So it's accusative, gender, feminine. And we've established that it's singular. Okay, so accusative, singular, and feminine. Now, here's the question. Why is it accusative, Singular and feminine. We'll look at Tain Galilean. What case gender number is that? That's right. And what do adjectives do when they're modifying nouns? They, yeah, they take the same, don't they? Okay. So now, now let's compare that with Tas Sunagogas. What case gender number is Tas Sunagogas? looking at those endings here. Mm, you see toss here? It would be uh, your, well, looking at the alpha here, what declension pattern is this? It, it's feminine first declension, right? So what are my case endings? It's zero, sigma, Yoda, new for the singular, nominatives, uh, genitive, datives, accusative, and the plural is Yoda, own, Yoda, sigma, and sigma. All right. So I have two possibilities here when I have a sigma case ending. It could be genitive singular or accusative plural when it's feminine, first declension. All right. When I have the alpha, which is it going to be? That's right. So this is accusative, plural, and feminine. All right. This is accusative, singular, feminine. Hallane is accusative, singular, feminine. So which one of these nouns, sunagogas or galilean, is all, all of, modifying? Yeah, it's modifying Galilee, you see. So he, he, uh, he came preaching in the, their synagogues. In and then Halen Tin Galilean in all of Galilee. All right. Does that that make sense? Okay. Good. Um oh yes. Mm hmm So Ace uh Halen Tain Galilean. How did you render that? Well, Galilee is is a, is a region at the time of Jesus. So you've got, yeah. So you've got Galilee far in the north, and you've got towns or cities in Galilee. Then you've got Samaria moving further south, and then Judea. So yeah. Um, by the way, Halas is uh, similar to pas pasapan, and and other quantifiers like that, where and demonstratives. Where these uh, these uh, 
adjectives are going to be in predicate position, um, uh, even though they, they function attributively. Okay, so remember, predicate position is where there won't be an article preceding uh, the uh, the form. Okay, good. Um, let, let's do look at Keruson and Ekbalon here for just a moment. Okay, uh, Keruson, Ekbalon. What kind of verbal forms are these? These are participles. Now, we haven't learned aorist participles yet, have we? So, we should uh, note then that if they are present stem participles, that their stem should match the lexical form of these verbs. And do these stems match the lexical form? Yes. The lexical form of this verb is keruso with the double sigma. The lexical form of ekbalon is well, ekbalo with the double lambda. Okay? So, these do follow... Uh, the uh, the the present stem, so these are present participles. Remember, we're using the word present really to refer to the stem being used, not not to the time. Because um, when did this happen? Elthin, he came, past time, Keruson and Ekbalon, right? So the preaching is past, even though we're using a present participle. So what's the effect of using the present participle here with this aorist verb? It's contemporaneous. He came preaching, meaning he came, and at that time back then that he came, he was preaching at the same time. Okay? So he came preaching and tadaimania ekbalon and casting out demons. Now, demons here is in front of the participle, but could it be the direct object of that participle? Can I put direct objects in front of verbs in Greek? Yes, I can put direct objects anywhere I want. I can put them on the moon, can't I? As long as the case <laughs> matches the function, we're cool. All right? So, um, he came preaching in this particular place and casting out, direct object, these particular things and demons casting out. All right? Now, look at the, the Keruson ending and Ekbalon ending. Uh, what, what case gender number are these participles? They are nominative, singular, masculine. That own ending is the nominative, singular, masculine form of participles. Why was a nominative, singular, masculine participle chosen here? Why not something else? Right, exactly. Whatever my subject is, it's not stated explicitly, but that subject of Elthin would have been nominative singular masculine. And the person doing the coming is also doing the preaching and the casting, casting out. Okay? So that's why these participles have to be nominative singular masculine. Okay? All right. Here, let's look at the, the second sentence. And, um, erkatai, which is a present form, but we'll translate it past since the context clearly is, um, someone came pros autan to him, and then we have la pros. Now, looking at the sigma following the stem vowel omicron, what case is la pros? Yeah, it's nominative, singular, and masculine, right? Autan is... Singular and masculine, but what case is it? It's accusative. So someone came to him. Which one of these came? Well, the leper came, right? The leper came to him. And now look at para cologne. He came for some cologne, if you speak Spanish. He came para cologne, right? So <clears throat> that's bad. Oh. You know, I met a student today I'd never met before who's in the Christianity department as a major. And I said, hi, I'm Dr. Marshall. He goes, you're Dr. Marshall. You're the one that loves puns. <laughs> and I said, oh my goodness, this is what you know me for. <laughs> All right. Okay, so para cologne matches Kerusone and Ekbalone. So what case gender number is it? 
nominative, singular, and masculine. So you tell me, is it the him or is it the leper who was parakaleoing? It was the leper because we have a matching of the case gender number, right? So the leper came to him, parakalonautan, imploring him, entreating him. All right? You see how, see how this works? This is one of the things I want us to do is to just, you know, see how Greek is helping us to, to connect these agents here or the subjects of the, the main verb frequently and the participle. Although sometimes the subject of the participle will not be the subject of the main verb. And the difference of case, it not being nominative, will help you. Okay? All right. Other questions? Yeah, let's look at number eight. All right, let's read uh, number number eight together. Ready? Hos de ein en tois heerasalumois en to pascha en te heorte paloi epistusan es ta anama autu theoruntes autu ta semea Ha epoye. All right. So, Kyle, why don't you give us a translation as far as you can get un until you stumble, and we'll help you out. Or if there's any particular issues, then stop and let's let's discuss them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in the Pascha. By the way, who knows how to say Easter in Spanish? Pascuas. Right? And it's it's related to this word here. Um so uh here's the question. The the uh the way we've often understood N as being in is usually spatial, right? But if Passover is a festival season or time, then the, the end is not spatial, but what? Temporal. So we're going to say something like, uh, you know, during Passover, right? Because uh, the, the preposition N is usually locating something uh, in a particular place or time. So you could say, uh, you know, at Passover or during Passover, okay? Um, and then what you have next is basically a reiteration of that, but instead of saying in Passover again, it just qualifies what Passover is, right? In the feast, meaning in, in the, the time of the feast. All right. Um, I forget which gospel this is. I think it's John's gospel. Uh, and John uh, sometimes is sensitive to his readers to make sure that they... He gives them explanatory glosses at times to say, hey, you may not be as familiar with customs. So I'm, you know, I'm using here a Jewish term that really only makes sense in a Jewish context. So if you're a Greek reader and you don't know Judaism, I'm just telling you that this is a, a feast time, right? Um, you, you, you could, you could, because sometimes basically... This whole, I've got two prepositional phrases here, right? So I have PP1 and PP2. No giggling there, okay? And uh, and basically, the second prepositional phrase is an apposition to the first prepositional phrase, okay? I could say, I went um, to New York, comma, to the most obnoxious city in the world, okay? To X, to Y, Right, New York and the most obnoxious place. But I'm using whole prepositional phrases. One's basically re recharacterizing the other. And if I'd gone to Baltimore, it'd have been the most awesome city, right? Or Charlottesville. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right, good. Go ahead and translate the rest of it for us, just to, we don't want to leave any loose ends here, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So take a look at the form theoruntes here, and let's identify the kind of verbal form it is. What do you see that tips you off? The new tau, so this is clearly participle. Epsilon sigma ending, which case gender number is that? Nominative plural masculine, good. And uh, so what nominative plural masculine thing in the sentence would this be matching to indicate the doer of the theoruntis? Paloi. So this goes back to the poloi. Hoi poloi. You guys know what hoi poloi means? <laughs> Does he? <laughs> okay, so the masses, the crowds. So many believed, and the many were theoruntus. They were beholding. Now, here's a question for you, just thinking in terms of the, the larger context. Um, do you think that the writer chose the participle because he had a, a temporal idea in mind for the participle? Um, uh, you know, the, was, that, was that what he was thinking? Or was it causal? That that's probably the the more likely way to read it. He probably had a causal relationship in mind between the believing and, and the beholding, right? So because they were seeing his the signs uh, which which he was doing, or his signs which he was doing, many believed. Yeah, because they beheld or because they were beholding or because they were Seeing, yeah, yep. All right, good. Anybody have any other questions about eight? All right. Yes, go ahead. Mm. Ah, yes, that's a good question. Um, the The word Jerusalem is frequently in the plural even though conceptually it's singular, right? So you see that that's, that's a dative plural, right? Why is it dative? Because of the preposition N that requires that. So it's, uh, it's like um, the word... Um, Hagion, or Hagias, sorry. That's uh, the word for holy, right? Okay. The uh, feminine form is hagia and the neuter form is hagian. Okay. Now I was thinking about the neuter form because the, uh, the adjective hagias, when it is neuter and uh, plural, hagia, um, that actually is, is translated as sanctuary, okay, which is singular even though it, it's technically a plural adjective form functioning substantively. So in the book of Hebrews, when it talks about Jesus going into the holy place, if you're reading it literally with the grammar, it's holy places, but it, it's referring to one place. It's, it's the, the inner sanctum. Yep. Okay, good.